folks, it is the holidays. You've likely had interaction with friends and family that you may only see around the holidays. And one of the things that I know of, having done this myself, is we have conversations about areas of interest, money, investing, things of that nature. It is at least my experience that most people I interact with occasionally are being lulled into a sense of comfort. They're being brainwashed. I've now come to adopt the following analogy. I think most people are stuck in the parking lot partying, having a keg party, dealing with their friends, being happy, but not really happy. Then there are folks in the stadium watching the event, doing the work. They've made some commitments. They got in the game. And then there are true players that are really doing the work and having transactions. I have brought on another player to have this conversation. Anna Kelly, we're going to talk about the folks in the parking lot, why they are brainwashed, why being comfortable is a myth. Uh, and we're just going to dive in. Anna, how you doing? I'm doing great. I love this analogy. I love sports and I've actually been in a tailgate. I've been <laughs> in the stands and I've I've played, not football, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to focus on the folks in the parking lot because I think just numerically speaking, uh, they dwarf players. They dwarf people in the stands. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people there, I don't know how to make the analogy work. I think they think they're having fun. They're around other people who think it's like an echo chamber. And then all of a sudden, one of them gets laid off. They have a, you know, they have a need for extra cash or whatever it is. They realize that going to college and getting student debt maybe wasn't as promised. Working 40 year, hours for 40 years sucks. So how do we help people? I don't know if the right answer is wake up, realize, get in the stands. That's that's an important thing to, to think about, I think. Yeah, I, I really like that analogy. And, you know, you just threw this at me. We didn't pre-plan yeah. the conversation, right? So just kind of nope. thinking through it. You know, I, I do think that when you look at tailgaters, a lot of times they have these big tailgate parties and they spend a ton of money on, you know, beer and chili and all that kind of stuff outside barbecue, yeah. but they don't spend the money to go into the stadium to buy the ticket. They think so that's they their event. It. So they're like, I can't afford the ticket, but we can go kind of be there and we can just mm -hmm. kind of hear the noise and and spend a bunch of money anyway. They probably end up spending just as much on the alcohol and the food as they would yeah. have for a ticket, right? Right. Um, but they think they're there. They think they're having fun and they think they can't afford it. So in some ways, it's a bit of a scarcity mindset. I can't afford the ticket. So let me figure out another way to kind of, you know, enjoy on the periphery. A lot of people that are interested, but not really committed. You know, you can be interested in something, but until you're committed, you're not going to be there on the field. And so I think there's a lot of people that tell me I'm interested in creating wealth, but you don't understand. I live check to check. I don't have anything extra. I can't afford to get started in real estate. They want it. They realize that they need to be there, but they think that they can't have it any other way. And so getting them out of that mindset to say, this is possible. If people like you and I, who didn't start off with anything, could figure this out and grow tremendous wealth, it's possible for them too, right? They just have to figure out, do you really want it? Are you committed? Or are you just interested and can I get you to buy the ticket and show up to the game and get you to that next step? Yeah. I wrote this book right here. Where is it? Oh, other shoulder. Sorry. 15 conversations with real estate millionaires. You can get it on Amazon for, for people in the parking lot. One yes. rental at a time. That one right there. Oh, oh, that one. I wrote for me. My kind of how, how was the journey? This one? Where is it? There it is was for folks in the parking lot because there's 15 different stories. I There are a few themes, and I think you hit on one. One is it takes sacrifice. Sacrifice is not a dirty word. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, hard is hard for everyone. I can tell you this much. So my 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 parents are, are both in their 70s. And this is basically about my father in this scenario. He, he worked... I don't know, 50 hours for 50 years, right? It's just always working. And I think if you were to ask him today and he gave him true serum, he would admit that it was a mistake. He should have invested. He tried some entrepreneurial things early in my childhood and he just 
just it just wasn't there, right? He he thought working 50 hours was the answer for his family. Right. I think a lot of people in the parking lot think that's the answer and that's why they get drunk on Sunday. Like that's their one blowout party to have fun for the week and then they go back to the slog and go back right. to work. That's um, the American way, right? Is uh, you're trained to go to school to be a good employee to know how to do the same basic things over and over again, to go to the work at your job that's supposed to be secure and you just continue to do it. You're on that hamster wheel and you just wait till you're 65 and think, oh, once I'm 65 and I retire, then I can live the life I want to. And in the meantime, I get one day a week to go enjoy life. And there's so much more to life than than that. Yeah, folks, again, I, we have eight or nine millionaires that come back every week on this channel. There are endless playlists on this channel. Go back and listen to them. Nobody started with anything. I have ninth grade dropouts. I have single parents that had 90,000 in debt, started this journey in their thirties. You had two kids. You sold a big home in Texas. You house hacked a fourplex in another state. Come on. Do you, I mean, are like, do you say, are, are you interested or do you really want this thing? Are you committed I think there are so many people and the people in the parking lot and the analogy just works for me. They're all buzzing around their friends. And then suddenly one of you gets a job loss. You're not there anymore. Yeah. You're like, what happens? Right. So, and it's again, tough. if we're going into a recession, I mean, start, start now. Absolutely. And, and we are going into a recession, you know, and I think that this is where, that mindset of, I can't quite afford the ticket, let me find something else. If we can start instead thinking, how can I afford the ticket? What can I do instead of showing up at the tailgate? What can I do to spend my time to learn, to expand my mind so that I can figure out how to afford that ticket? And that's really the shift there is if you really ask them, they want to be in the stadium. They don't want to just be in the tailgate. They just think that they can't be in the stadium. So the tailgate's what they have to resign themselves to. So if you can say, how can I? Because you can, right? And even in a recession, number one, how can you prepare for a recession? Number two, how can you live below your means, save a little bit of money so that you can have enough money to then afford that ticket? And then how can you start figuring out how to expand your means, make more money without having to necessarily work 50 hours a week to start investing? So some of that money just shows up in your checking account when you need to buy the ticket. So believing that you can, knowing that it's possible and really deciding I'm committed to getting in the game. If you're committed, you'll figure out how to expand your means so that you can get the ticket to get in the game. Yeah, and I guess the last thing, just totally playing with this, this analogy, when, once you get into the stadium, everybody starts at the top, right? The nosebleeds. It's the cheapest ticket you can. But as you're in this journey, your seat gets incrementally better, and then eventually you're on the on the field. What do you think of that? I, I love it. And as someone who took two of my kids to the World Series this year, never dreaming that I'd be able to do that. I literally remember taking my two kids in the Houston Astros Stadium in baseball, and we were up at the very, very top, furthest section from the field in the 400s. We could barely see the people on the ground, but we were at the game, and we were so excited just to be there and be able to buy those tickets and take my two kids. Never dreamed that I'd be able to afford World Series tickets. And so, again, life is about way more than the World Series. But for a sports analogy, if I hadn't started to get in the game and gone in that stadium and said, I love being here, let's figure out how we can afford to be at more games, never would have been able to, to do what I just was able to do going to the World Series. Yeah, the last thing I want to talk about is the folks in the parking lot. I don't know if brainwashed is the right word. I, I, I'm, my vocabulary is not that great, but conditioned may be the right word. I think folks in the, in the parking lot are conditioned to think they're happy. And I don't really think they are. If you were to ask them kind of quietly, right. They want to be in the stadium and many of them want to be on the field, but they're just, I'm, you know, I'm conditioned to say I'm okay when you're not really okay. You're not yeah. okay. Yeah. What do you think? I think for a lot of people that may be that may be true. You know, I think there are certain certain people that are very content in life no matter what. And so they're just not going to necessarily have that aspiration, you know, to 
to invest more for more happiness. But I think a lot of people just want to play a part. They really want more. They just can't, don't know how to get there, right? Or they're not surrounded by the right people to help them get inside. And so that's important too. You know, who you put yourself around, who you uh, allow to influence your mindset and influence what you're capable of doing and how you can get in. The more you're with people attending the game, the more you're going to want to get in the game, the more you're going to want to make the sacrifices to make sure that you're inside, right? Um, I think there's players inside that that may not really want to play. They just want they want to watch it and want it to come easy to them and that fun to come there too, right? But I think if we really ask ourselves, if you're sitting outside the game, you really want to be in or you wouldn't be there, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Lastly, I'll kind of round out because I agree with you. If you are truly happy, truly happy at your core, I want you to hear from me. I think you won the game. I think the game of life is about being happy as often as you can. Mm -hmm. And if you are truly happy in the parking lot, I wish you nothing but success. I just believe, and maybe it's my interactions and my interactions are probably very biased. I get it. Most people aren't happy. And the few that say they're happy, aren't really happy. But again, if you are without question, truly happy in the parking lot, by all means, I'll buy you a beer. We're all good. Anna, where can people find you? And let's bring this home. First, I'll say, I absolutely agree with you. You know, I, I will say something I'm surprised I'm saying, but, but it's true. Not everybody is cut out to be a real estate investor. Not everybody wants to be a real estate investor and that's okay, right? If you're here, you're interested, you might be in that parking lot. So we want you to get in the game, right? Because we know what it's like to be inside and we know that you can be totally happy and still take your happiness and your financial freedom and your lack of fear for the future to a whole nother level because you decided to get in the game. So you can find me here every week with you, Michael, on my playlist on your channel and on my website and social media at reimom.com and Anna Kelly, REI Mom. Thank you so much. Thank you.